Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Supernatural Files. While we dive into the unexplained and the supernatural realm itself, while today we are going to explore the wonderful world of angels. Are they angelic beings or just visitors from another world or another dimension? Strap in for yourself while we take you on this adventure of the angels. First of all, we have to understand what is an angel? Angels have been pillars in many religions. They serve as the messenger of God. And then there are some that believe that these angels were sent to earth to protect us. They are shown as human figures dressed in long robes and an angelic halo on the top of their head. And angels are the most recognizable figures throughout the whole world and throughout history. Now let's get into the etymology of it. The word angel comes from Old English and Old French, which was borrowed from the late Latin language. According to Dutch linguist R.S.P. Beeks, angelos that may be an oriental loan, the rendering of angelos is the Septuagint's default language of the biblical Hebrew term Ma'ak, which simply means messenger without connotating its nature. In the Latin Vulgate, thus, meaning becomes when Malak or Angelos is, is supposed to denote a human messenger. If the word refers to some supernatural being, the word Angelos appears. Such differentiation has been taken over by lay vernacular translation of the Bible. Let's get into the purpose of the angels themselves. Angels have different purposes to different people. They are to be messengers of divine intervention of God himself, exchanging messages from heaven to the earth. They are known for their purity and virtue. For many, angels bring comfort during troubling times. There are countless stories of the angels descending from heaven, protecting or guiding humans. The origin of angels has always been a cornerstone of religion. They serve as a comfort for many, as mentioned through the Old and New Testament of the Bible. The angels are creation of God and serve many purposes on heaven and on earth. There is a hierarchy to the angels itself, and we're going to explore the different orders of the angels. There are nine different orders, all which that give us an insight into their purpose and duties. The first one is the seraphim. That is the name that is given to the highest order of angels. They sit before God's throne and praise Him. They are said to have three sets of wings, one which covers their face, another which covers their feet, and the last one is for use for flying. Now let's get into the cherubim. They are the second highest order. They are said to be like human-like creatures and guardians of God's glory. The New Testament says that they will be in attendance for the apocalypse. Today, they are known for having knowledge of God. The next one are the thrones. The thrones are a unique group of angels. They are known to be in the space of the cosmos where they help other lower groups. They are known for the humility, their drive for peace, and complete submission to God. The next layer is the dominions. They supervise and regulate the actions of other angels. They are known for to be the commanders of God and also the angels of leadership. The next, the next layer is the virtues. Virtues control the elements like fire, wind, water, earth. They can control nature, they can control the seasons, the skies, and the sun itself. They are in charge of miracles and promote courage and grace. They are sometimes known as the shining ones. 
Next, we have layer of the powers. The powers fight evil and protect both the humans and the cosmos. They are known as the warrior angels and fight off evil spirits who want to destroy humans and their spirits. The name of the leader is Kemael or Semael, who is an angel of darkness. Next layer we have the archangels, but instead of going over this one, we're going to make a separate video of the archangels itself. And after the archangels, we have the principalities. They are a unique order of angels. In the New Testament, they were described as to be a metaphysical being. But now, they are to be hostile to humans and to God. The next order is the angels themselves. They are the closest to human, both in appearance and proximity. They deliver the prayers to God and then brings back God's message to the humans. They are able to access the other angels when needed. They are known to be caring and social, helping humans during their time of need. Now you're probably wondering what happens, like do these angels have children or other stuff? So let's get into it. This is called the family portion. Angels do not marry or have families. They are the creation of God and do not have traditional parents. They also do not have children, but they do live in units, which might be recognized by humans as families. Let's get into the parents. The mental picture you have in, in, as an angel isn't entirely accurate. While the large wings, golden halos, and long flowing garments are synonymous with angels, there are no biblical description of what an angel actually is. Angels are classified as being spirit beings. They do not have a physical form, but they do take up space. So they do have a form, just not a human one. But the Bible does say that there are variations of every kind of angels, both in heaven and on earth. Let's get into the symbology. There are many symbols associated with angels, some designated to the special type of angels. For example, angel outlines, such like those that are found in clouds, are associated with guardian angels. Wings are also linked to guardian angels. Along with swords, pennies have been a symbol of angels. Many believe that the angels leave the pennies behind for the humans to find, as a sign of their concern, are used to symbolize messages from the angels. And halos are another common symbol, typically included in costumes. Many believe that angels don't necessarily have halos, but that the angels emit an aura so bright that the human eye can't capture it. So whether the angels are visitors from another world or another dimension, one thing is certain, we are not ready to perceive or recognize angels as a being right now, but in the future, who, who would even know? But if you made it this far in the video, be sure to subscribe button down below, hit it with the thumbs up, click the notification bell to always on, and leave a comment down below. And uh, I'm going to be flying out of this episode. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Central Files. While we dive into the unexplained and the supernatural realm, so, today we are going into the realm of uh, each individual archangel. Well, you know what the more tells are told in ancient Greek, Korean, and 9th, between 1921 and 1969. March 24th for Gabriel and October the highest of the angels though the acceptance of this archangels but the named angels vary Raphael are always mentioned but the others may vary energy vitality and health while removing gaining the drained power or using 